Kamala Harris has expressed multiple times throughout her political career her desire to take firearms away from law-abiding citizens. But the question that I want to ask in this video isn't whether individual citizens should be disarmed, but should Kamala Harris, who has suggested that she owns a firearm, should she herself be disarmed based on her recent comments? Hey everybody, this is Praxis. I don't talk much about politics here on my channel, although I frequently get accused of talking about politics here on my channel because I say things like 1 plus 1 equals 2, or if you change the makeup of gases in the atmosphere, you change the properties of that atmosphere. That's not politics, that's math, and that's science. Politics is talking about, well, what do you do about the idea that changing the makeup of the atmosphere causes changes in the properties of the atmosphere. That's politics. And I want to talk a little bit about politics today, specifically about uh, some comments by a politician recently as it relates to uh, irresponsibility with firearms. I think that we can all agree, if we knew how to read and could read the Second Amendment of the Constitution, that all citizens of the United States have a right to bear arms. I think we could also all agree that while that might be true, and it is, that there's a lot of people that probably shouldn't bear arms. And I think in this clip that I'm about to show you, it gives a really good example of someone that does have the right to bear arms here in the United States, but I think this is somebody who probably should not bear arms because of the way that they seem to think about firearms ownership. If somebody and I thought that breaks was in my house, they're getting shot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, so that is Kamala Harris, and she's clearly trying to appeal to voters who have a very legitimate concern based on her very clear track record of trying to curtail people's ability to own firearms to protect themselves here in the United States. Uh, in that video clip, uh, she is saying that if somebody were to break into her house, that person is going to get shot. And that is, in my opinion, a really irresponsible way to look at firearms ownership. And if that's really what she thinks it means to be a owner of a firearm, you can see why she might want to disarm people because the idea that she's expressing in that clip is that if somebody breaks into her house, they are going to get shot. Not that she's going to use her firearms to protect herself and worse comes to worse, there's going to uh, ha you know, have to be shots fired and somebody may be injured. The idea is if someone breaks into her house, they are going to get shot. And that's the mindset that leads to things like family members being injured by fire firearms. They'll be like, you know, a parent and they'll have a firearm in the house and then the, their child comes home late and they kind of, I don't know, they forget that they're out or something. They think that it's a burglar and they shoot first and ask questions later. That's the concept that uh, Kamala Harris is expressing in this video clip. And in my opinion, I think that is a really irresponsible way to look at firearms. Owning fire firearms here in the United States is a very clear right, and it was laid out with incredible clarity in the Second Amendment. But owning firearms is also an enormous responsibility. People probably all over the world, but I know certainly here in the, the United States, because this is where I live and I, I'm rubbing elbows with people, people love to talk about and think about their freedoms, and people very infrequently like to think about the responsibilities that come with those freedoms. Now let's talk a little bit more about this specific concept that Kamala Harris is putting forward in this uh, interview that she had with Oprah. Now, on the surface of it, what she says, uh, it's accurate, it's true. Uh, if somebody breaks into her house, in all likelihood, they are going to get shot. Now, the inference, uh, because of the uh, context of the question, is that you know Oprah's uh, talking to her, to her about the fact that she owns a firearm. So the inference is that Kamala Harris is going to be the person that shoots first and asks questions later. But the reality is that if somebody breaks into Kamala Harris's house, they are up against the Secret Service. And the Secret Service is essentially a mini private army there to protect Kamala Harris from people who would wish to do her harm using the types of tools that Kamala Harris universally in the past has talked about uh, having a desire to take away from people. Now you can see why Kamala Harris wouldn't really care that much about taking away people's right to individually own a firearm. Well, you know, she claims to own one and I have no reason to think that she doesn't. There's not really any uh, 
likely scenario where Kamala Harris is actually herself going to have to protect herself because she has a little private army around her. So you can see why it wouldn't really matter to her that much if she were to take away all the firearms from law-abiding citizens, because even if her own firearm were taken away from her, she has that mini private army armed with the types of firearms that in many areas are banned. I don't know specifically what types of firearms, you know, her people carry or what the magazine loads are, but I'd be a little bit surprised if they kept their magazine loads to under five rounds, and I'd also be pretty surprised if while they're uh, traveling around uh, protecting her, that uh, traveling state to state, that they are taking their firearms, removing all the ammunition from them, putting them in separate lock boxes in the back of their uh, vehicle. They are operating under a different set of rules then, you know, the rest of us, you know, in many parts of the country are forced to operate under. So you can see why Kamala Harris doesn't have a lot of concern for the idea that her safety could be in jeopardy because she doesn't have to abide by the same types of rules that she is advocating for in other people. But really what I want to focus on in this clip is, you know, what did she mean by that? Was she honest with the idea? Because the inference in this is that someone breaks into her, her house and they would be shot by her. Uh, you know, that, that was the context of the whole conversation. Think a little bit about, like, does she really mean that? There's two, there's two possibilities here. One is that she does mean it, and the other is that she doesn't mean it. But if you're going to be the, the President of the United States on the, what seems to be the cusp of World War III, I don't know that we want to have someone in there that is of the mental mindset that you shoot first and then ask questions later you know, determine later as to whether or not that was the correct course of action. I think that, you know, anybody who is in that position of power is also in a position of responsibility to wield that power in a way that is not going to lead to unintended, well, I don't want to say unintended because I don't know what people's intents are, but unnecessarily negative outcomes. So if she meant what she said, I think that's reason for concern if you have someone who is in that position of power, who has nuclear launch codes, that has that mindset, of shoot first and ask questions later. But stepping back from that, you know, did she really mean what she said? And you know, to be honest, I don't think that she did. I think that what she is doing there is she is trying to appeal to voters. I don't think that she really is in that mindset of shoot first and ask questions later, which I guess if she, that would be a good thing. <laughs> if she became the president of the United States, hopefully she would have a little bit more restraint with the nuclear weapons. Although, you know, with a lot of the rhetoric, rhetoric that we see coming out of, you know, her, uh, it's not her administration, but, you know, the cadre of people that she uh, tends to associate with, uh, you know, I don't have a, an enormous amount of confidence that that would be the case, but, you know, that is a little bit comforting if she is being disingenuous with those statements. And I, I hope that she is being disingenuous. Now, why would she be disingenuous? Well, clearly what she's trying to do is reach out to people who don't have private armies around them, people who have firearms, own them responsibly, don't have any plans to hurt anyone with them, and are concerned with the idea that uh, the government would want to disarm law-abiding citizens in the I think misplaced hope that criminals will decide to start following those new laws and they will give up their firearms as well. Uh, so, you know, I, the way that I look at this is that it is kind of political pandering. And uh, it kind of gives you a sense of her view of people who own firearms. If that is what she thinks, if saying things like that is something that she thinks would appeal to people like myself, I'm really offended by the idea that somebody, uh, you know, be believes that that is you know, what people like myself, uh, you know, that, that is I, kind of our worldview, that if somebody steps into my house, I'm just going to start firing off shots and ask questions later. Owning a firearm is an enormous responsibility, and you don't just start firing off shots unless you have a really good reason to believe that your life or the life of people around you is in danger. There have many, uh, been many people who have been put in jail. I don't know uh, Kamala Harris's entire track record as a prosecutor, but it wouldn't surprise me if she had got people put away in jail for uh, expressing or acting upon the same kind of cavalier attitude around firearm sh safety that she was expressing in that Oprah in interview. So I wanted to talk about that a little bit in this video, just because I think that a lot of times here in this community in particular, we uh, focus a lot on our rights to, uh, to own and bear firearms. But it's also really important to think about the responsibility aspect to that, because clearly, you know, Kamala Harris, the way that she's looking at this community, from what I kind of 
presume is the outside, but it doesn't seem like she's had any kind of a safety class or an appropriate, uh, appropriate use of force kind of training, uh, you know, based on her statements. Um, you know, she's looking at it from a perspective of people acting irresponsibly, not taking the responsibility of the power that you are, um, that is invested in, in you when you, uh, you know, own a firearm, because a firearm is a way of leveling the playing field, and somebody who doesn't have a lot of physical strength can still defend themselves against a superior force of strength, uh, you know, based on their ability to have that tactical tool. It's a playing field leveler that allows an old woman, like a grandmother, to defend herself from uh, violent offenders breaking into her home. It's something that would allow a woman alone walking down the streets to uh, defend herself from, you know, a male attackers that without the firearms in the mix there'd be no way that she could defend herself against. This is why I carry a firearm myself because there are dangers out there for people like myself who don't have a small private army around us that uh, with, without the aid of a firearm I just would not be able to compete against. If there was a big uh, a group of big guys or you know, to be honest, just just one really big guy. I'm not I'm not a huge guy myself. You know, one really big guy starts trying to mess with me and my son. Having a firearm arm on me allows me to have some kind of a chance to defend against that kind of situation. And you know, God forbid, if it was a, a large group of people, there's no way that a single person and their child could defend against a whole gang of people unless you have that firearms uh, as a playing field leveler, or like Kamala Harris, you have a small private army around you. So I wanted to talk about that a little bit in this video, both the right and the responsibility to, to wield that kind of power in a responsible way. You don't just start firing shots off whenever you get a little bit nervous, because, uh, well, you know what? I don't even need to, for anyone that needs to ha have the because explained at the end of that, you know, Maybe you're just not the kind of person that should have a firearm. I would, I would never argue against your right to have a firearm, but if you are of that kind of mindset like Kamala Harris expressed, where you are the kind of person that just shoots first and asks questions later, you know, honestly, you should think twice before owning something like that because the consequences of that type of brash behavior with that type of power in your hands can, can be life-changing, both for the people around you and for yourself having to deal with the... Uh, the uh, the ramifications of knowing the damage that you inflicted on other people, possibly unnecessarily, possibly because of a, um, a misunderstanding, you don't just shoot first and ask questions later, Kamal Harris. Hey YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see on the right hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at Patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.